Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anand Chigrin, and along with me is Dan Debrunner. We'll introduce ourselves in a minute. But uh, welcome to this, uh, what is it called? Maybe podcast or, or webcast or something like that. Uh, you are here uh, probably because you have some interest in GraphQL because you know that it's kind of an awesome way of delivering data to front-end applications. And you're also probably here because you know that a lot of your data is logged away in databases. And, and what this talk is today is about is how do you actually marry the two sides? My name is Anand Jigrin. Uh, I'm older than what I look in this picture. Uh, I'm, I'm part of the founding team for Steps In. And I've done, done some amount of work in the world of databases, be it at IBM or be it at Berkeley or, or subsequently. And then along with me is Dan. Dan, say hello. Hello, this is uh, Dan DeBrunner, working at Steps End, focusing on our GraphQL support and interaction with databases. I worked on a lot of database systems you know, as an internal architect, including uh, working on Apache Derby, an embedded Java database. And, and you can recognize his, his Brit accent out there. So he says Derby, whereas I would say Derby. <laughs> so, so that's, that's uh, absolutely awesome. And, and welcome, everybody. Uh, let's get uh, started. So, so databases have been around for, for quite some time. And people have said, OK, that's it. That's it. The next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And, and just like, I think it was Mark Twain, but uh, maybe it was somebody else. But the predictions of the death of databases have been greatly exaggerated. Right. So if you if you really look at it, uh, 1970s had Ingress and System R, which were pioneering databases. Then in 80s there was this commercial things, uh, Oracle, Sybase, DB2. Open source came about in 1990s. Then NoSQL came about in 2000s, and many other new forms of databases are coming about. And so now this has been more than kind of a around 45 year journey, and databases have just continued to evolve and be the workhorses. In fact. Uh, by some estimates, there are like at least a few exabytes of data stored away in these databases. And, and I'm sure that's that's somewhat of an undercount. And so we are looking at a, a, a 1 million terabytes or a, or, or a 1 billion uh, gigabytes of data that are logged away. So all of this data is logged away. And yet, you want to be able to take this data and build some really, really powerful experiences using GraphQL. And that's what this webinar is all about. So the core problem with all of the data that you want to deal with is that, that you as a, as a developer or you as somebody who's interested in, in creating uh, experiences really want to view the data as, as a set of business objects. A customer is a customer is a customer, an order, a product, the delivery status, the weather, for example, if you want to personalize. But the data is actually logged away in these kind of weird structures maybe kind of relational tables with links between tables, maybe multiple tables, or some data might be logged away in some APIs, which may have some REST endpoints or, or, or XML or BISTL endpoints. And yet, you want to build the experiences across the data that is all logged away in these backend systems and view the data with these sets of, of uh, business objects that you can actually construct the developer experiences from. And the key question is, what is that API that will take those kind of back-end constructs and deliver to you these these uh, really really relevant constructs for the interaction because when the developer is when when a end user is coming in for that experience she's only interested in she as a customer she doesn't care about the 14 tables across which her record is is scattered and she doesn't actually care about where the delivery data is coming from she just cares about whether her order has been delivered or not been is going to be delivered soon so the first thing that you've got to kind of figure out is what the language of the API. And since all of you are here, you actually do have an interest in, in GraphQL. I have fallen in love with GraphQL. I, I did SQL for 20, 25 years, and I did REST APIs at, at Apigee for, for a decade. And GraphQL gets certain things really, really right. Now, of course, in any language, there are always some sets of issues. But it has these three phenomenal properties that allow the front end to actually interact with the back end by being able to express things that you want based on things that you know. Uh, for those of you who have looked at Swagger docs or OpenAPI docs, know that that's not really 
something that you really look forward to. And, and GraphQL APIs tend to be self-documenting, so the uh, cognitive overload of the developers is far less. And then it re they really allow for abstractions, and yet details are needed. So a customer is a customer, but sometimes you really need to know some level of customer that's logged away in some database. So how can you actually do that? And it turns out that GraphQL, which came out of Facebook, is just a fantastic language that allows you to actually connect the dots and yet have these three properties that I've talked about. Okay, So we have fallen in love with GraphQL. So the API that we're building out out of databases and other stuff is, is GraphQL. So the second thing that you've got to kind of solve for is, is not just that API, but really if you kind of think about that API and you think about kind of the customer problem, the customer or an order or product, the data are actually scattered across uh, multiple subsystems or even within a system across multiple tables. So I call this the channel problem. That is you start, you've got kind of two ends that have got to kind of meet. You've got to start digging from both sides and you hope that you kind of meet in the middle. And, and sometimes you, you want to start with a view of the, uh, the front end and want to connect the uh, back end dots. And sometimes you want to start with the back end and say, okay, what can it tell me? And then build your front end around it. And sometimes you want to start from both sides. And so really you have to be able to kind of solve this channel problem because the back ends are back ends and the front ends really want to uh, you know, focus on, on kind of their, the business object. So uh, Dan, tell us why the back ends in databases tend to be both ugly and good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they're good because they're high performance data stores that do everything that potentially multiple business units want but they may not necessarily map to your GraphQL types that you want to present in terms of your user experience. So if we're looking at having the GraphQL types of customer order and, and the product, and then we try to map it to the database schema, you may find that it's scattered across multiple tables and including linkage tables. So for example, here, I may want a location within customer so I can do personalized weather, but here, the customer table doesn't have any location information. I have to go through a linkage table. So you've got to take this potentially complex database schema and, and extract it, the fields that you want, the relationships you want in your GraphQL schema. Awesome, awesome. And we have done this uh, over, over maybe uh, four, maybe five decades between the two of us. We have seen, we have both built efficient databases and yet seen how the front end people kind of struggle with extracting this uh, this stuff out of it, and and in some ways the back ends are optimized for back ends, and the front ends need to be uh, then extract and build the data out of it. Okay, of course, so, of course, as a front end developer, you have no control over that schema, so you have yes. to work with what's there. That's exactly right. Dan. Okay, the third thing is that while you all are here for databases, the fact of the matter is that. Your data is not just in databases. Your data might be in some backend systems. Your database may be in some third-party API. So, for example, uh, if you were to build a very, very simple website that displays the weather, that displays customer information, and that displays uh, the the status of the delivery product of the the delivery status of the products that he or she has ordered, the the core information might might come from one or two databases, but the weather information comes from Open Weather Map. And the the uh, the delivery information will come from FedEx and UPS. So so you also while databases are really fundamentally important, they are not the only thing that are needed in order to kind of bring everything together for your front end experience. So let's tell you about what we at at StepZen do. So in 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 StepZen, we allow you to kind of mix and match back end data, okay, and be able to quickly construct the types, and we'll kind of show you what it is. There are data for which we don't know anything about, and we do what is called introspection. We kind of look at and understand what the data is really saying. There's data for which we have kind of pre slept and understood its, its schema. Okay, for example, weather and delivery, et cetera, et cetera, some other things that, that we'll show you. And there can be things uh, anywhere in between. Okay. And, and the, the thing that we are trying to do, we have done a good job of, but there's, there's a lot more work to be done is to you just point us to the back end we kind of introspect them or we have pre-introspected them and we assemble a graphql api that you can actually just query uh the back end furthermore since you're front-end developers sometimes you may not even care about the kind of graphql so we try to give you some react components 
that you do not even have to worry about GraphQL. Okay, why are we able to do this? Is that we are a bunch of people, as you saw, who kind of understand databases. We understand what it means to actually deploy and run scalable artifacts, having done this work at Apigee and, and at Google. And, and the idea is that we are really trying to understand the inputs and outputs of each system and connect the dots, but also be able to do protocol translations and address the runtime problems. Okay, so, so what we have right now is that we have got this capability that we'll show you, which is easy to set up, abstract SQL and REST backends. We'll, we'll spend a lot of time on SQL, stretches the API together. But the other advantage that we think we are giving you is that everything runs as a service. So in some ways, we carry the pager so that you don't have to. And that GraphQL API is always on. It stores the backend keys safely. It manages the access control. You paralyze the execution and, and everything else. OK, so let's let's dive straight into the code and, and take a look at, at how we actually bring databases and other things together in order to actually build out your API. The scenario that we have is, is what I talked about, which is that that there'll be a there'll be a front-end app that will use GraphQL to fetch customer order product uh, delivery and weather data. The customer order and product will come from MySQL. Uh, if I have time, I'll show you, but you probably don't have time to show how you can have data scattered across multiple uh, databases. So so you can have it in MySQL or Postgres or whatever it is. But but how does that data manifest itself into customer orders and product? And then how do you kind of bring into it then we and weather information, which is from third party APIs. Okay, so, so with that, let's get started. So this is, uh, this is VS Code. And, and when you sign up for Steps in, in, in case you haven't, you will NPM install uh, a CLI called, called Steps in, obviously. And we are using the latest, greatest version of CLI. And this version will be available to you uh, pretty soon. But, but I've already uh, installed it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create an entire React app, connect a backend, and show you the entire process and how that can actually be done. OK, so let's let's do this. Let me do a create steps and app. Um, and let's call that my, my folder as, as, as React app. OK, and, and it's going to go and uh, create uh, my React app uh, out there. And and once it has kind of created the React app, okay, and and uh, I'll show you what what really happened. So so a, a directory got created called uh, so let's let's go to this uh, directory, React app, and and I need to do two things out there. So one is I will I will start the the React app. So I will do npm start, and I'll start the backend, which is which is step which is steps in start okay so now i've got both the back end and the and and the app running and we we automatically picked the back end endpoint for you and and if you can look at that that react app what we have done is we have preloaded location and weather schema as just, we didn't ask you anything we just kind of preloaded that uh, location of the schema and and this time we are querying, and this is a query that is default in it. And we are querying for this IP, what is the city and what's the weather. And we automatically are going and collecting the details from IP API and from Open Weather Map and bringing it together. And it turns out that this city is Ashburn, I think in Illinois. And and uh, it's about uh, 30.81 in, in degrees Celsius. Okay, and there's a back end that is supporting this particular thing. So if you really look at it, that backend has got a way of issuing these various queries of location and weather, and we are going to actually go and build something more on it. Okay, so that's that's awesome. But now let's let's actually go and 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 upload schema from a database. So I will do a something called a steps and import MySQL. Okay, and and uh, oh, once again, uh, let me just go to. Uh, React app and do steps in import MySQL and and it's going to say okay let me try to find out what data is available in the MySQL and in this case I have to tell it where that stuff exists and if I don't have I have butterfingers or fat fingers as the expression here hopefully everything will work out 
well uh, okay and and let's do a uh, let's let's make sure that i've got got the uh, password etc set up and i may have uh, yes i i know what i did so hang on one second guys um, sorry about that What's my host? 224, 227. I'm trying to hide this password from all of you. So because of that, I'm doing uh, okay. And there it is. The whole thing got imported and and it is automatically deployed. This fellow is watching and it automatically got deployed. And now let's go go see see what, what really happened. Okay, and let's reload it. And now we have gotten all of these, uh, all of this data that is now available to us that is coming from from uh, MySQL. So, for example, let's try to see details for this customer one. Okay, let's see what what is his or her email address, what's the name, what orders uh, has he or she done, and what are uh, what are the uh, when was that order created? Okay, and let's let's go issue this query. And this this data is coming out of MySQL, and we just with that one command of steps and import MySQL, we are able to bring that uh, data in and and auto generate these these queries as shared. So let's just kind of show you what code got created out there. So let's let's go take a look at this and and show you what got code got created. So this is what we imported from base MySQL. And all the complications that you saw, okay, were all analyzed by us. And we created these types. We created a type called address. We created a type called customer. We created a type called line item. We created a type called order. We understood that that for a customer, we should be able to connect uh, address. And and we didn't create a type called the link table type. But we're able to figure out how to connect customer to address. So, for example, if I go back here, I can, for example, know the address for this customer. Okay, and and let's see what 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 city uh, he's in, and it turns out that he's in Boston. All of that is done automatically for us, for you, because we have gone and analyzed the back end, and we have understood what types can get created and what types can be linked together, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now you can go in as this as a starting point. And this is a starting point. You can basically go in and change anything. You can add your own queries. You can change the names. You can change the types. This is just basically what we think is a kind of a good starting point. You can live with it or you can modify it. And we'll, we'll actually do this in subsequent builds. We we'll actually go in and, and, and change this. But now let's also see what happens to my, my React app. Let's kind of uh, put this stuff in the, in the React app. Okay, and 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 just see what's really going on out there. Let's go into hello world.js as opposed to this query. Let's actually do this query. Okay. And and let's let's save it. And hopefully, if everything works out okay, we're going to get this is going to get redeployed. And if I look at my React app, guess what? On that React app, now I'm getting the data that uh, is coming from a from a back end that's actually fetching all of it. So so you've got kind of an endpoint. Uh, that you can go and manipulate, and and you have you have schlepped information from MySQL, and we get things automatically set up, and then you've got a React app. In this case, the React app is a very simple app that basically displays in a nested HTML form the data, but you just went and pasted it, and now you have got this uh, uh, stuff uh, available for you. We'll make over time we'll make this even easier, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, for you. Now let's do something else. So this is all good, but you know that the delivery information will never be in the database. The delivery information will always sit in, uh, will have to come live from uh, UPS or FedEx or whatever it is. So let's go and add delivery information out here. And and uh, before that, let me also show you that, that not only did we generate these various types, but we also generated the mutations, which is the way to create new data on this type. So let's add a mutation. And let's, for example, add uh, a customer, and and let's let's make this customer Anand at stepzen.com. 
And and for now, let's just do this. Let's uh, make this happen. And 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 let's see what ID got created when we actually go and execute this. And this was ID number twelve that got created. So now now there is an unknown jingle record. So not only do we create, not only have we created the uh, the the query types, but we have also gone and created all the mutations that that are acceptable that will allow you to actually update and and we understand when these are auto increments and when these are not auto increments and we kind of take care of all of that stuff. So that's that's uh, hopefully that's awesome. And the one last thing that I want to tell you is that look, it is not just the the data is not just in MySQL as we showed you whether and location come elsewhere, but in this context. You may have data that is actually sitting in in uh, you may want to fetch the data from UPS and or from FedEx. So you've got a beta feature where where you can actually go and import. Okay, so let's go and import here. Uh, in this case, let's go and import UPS. Okay, and and see what really happens. Okay, so so. It asks you, do you want to connect to UPS using your keys or steps and keys? We support both. So let's go in using steps and keys. Okay. And now if I go here and I reload, okay, I should have a new type called delivery information UPS that takes tracking ID and returns the status and status date. But one more beauty about GraphQL is you can actually link various things together. So let's do one last piece, okay, which is which is connect orders to to uh, to the delivery information and you'll see how simple that is let's let's create a new file let's call it extend dot graphql okay and let's extend the type type order okay with a new field called delivery okay that returns something of type delivery and and the only thing that you need to do is I don't know why this fellow always tries to do this. Only thing you need to do is to tell steps in what query needs to be executed among all the queries that we showed you. What query needs to be executed to actually make this this work? And in this case, we do this. And and what we'll do is we'll add this file in the manifest. Okay. And 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 let's let's save this. And now steps in should auto redeploy, knowing that there's a new file that it needs to, to uh, display. And if I kind of redo it now in the context of a customer, okay, I should be able to not only get the order, okay, but also get the delivery and the status state. Okay. And let's go run this query. And, and this goes in and actually deliver, fetches the information straight from UPS and brings it in. Okay, so so we we introspected a MySQL. We got a set of types. We got a set of queries. We got a set of mutations that actually are auto generated for you. You can always go and modify. We have a React app that that you can just go and and fetch that data into that that React app. And over time, we'll have many more templates. But also, we understand that the project that you're doing don't just start and end with the database, and you need to be able to bring in other stuff. And I showed you how you can actually bring in UPS information and 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 connect the dots. Okay, so now with that, uh, that's what we basically did, and 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 hopefully this all 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 made sense. Uh, you can of course do all of this on your own. You can you can write your uh, the code to Excel the backend. You can uh, you can understand the primary key foreign key relationships. You can connect through joins. You can set up queries, types, resolvers, mutations. You can do all of that stuff. You can host it. You can have it uh, running, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't have to worry about any of these things because we do this in 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 steps. And if you like what we have, we've got more content that we can be able to share with you on some of the stuff that we showed you. How do you actually modify the code that's generated? How do you switch out MySQL Postgres? Uh, how do you use uh, MongoDB uh, for products and reviews, et cetera, et cetera. But the central thing is that we want to make it really, really simple for all of you to not worry about your backend. 
we take care of them and we run as a service so that uh, you can just go and build awesome mm, uh, digital experiences. Okay. And then one last thing for those of you who are kind of performance geeks and others, uh, we kind of understand the query that's being going to be run and we figure out when we can parallelize it, what parts we can go and execute in parallel. How do we kind of ensure that you're not submitting too many queries to the database, et cetera. We kind of try to do all of those smarts. It's not that we're doing all the smarts, but we understand the backends and what they can and cannot do. And we do kind of cost-based optimizations associated with that. Anything to add here, Dan, on this particular slide? I mean, no, it's just you can see that the customer ID, customer by ID, you know, has two or three nested objects, orders and whether, and then product is, is nested in orders. And you can see it's a uh, sort of parallelized view on the right where obviously we had to get the orders first before we can get the sub objects. But as soon as we get those orders, sorry, get the customer first, as soon as we get that, we can start to sort of spray out the queries in parallel, including at the bottom there, you can see that we went to FedEx and UPS for the orders because some of the orders came from FedEx and some came from UPS. And those are all in parallel. And then we just you know, bring the results together and produce the correct uh, GraphQL response. Right. So in some ways, if you are kind of following a lot of stuff, our response time is driven by kind of the max, the worst case response time, as opposed to the sum of all response times. Okay. So um, just, yeah, uh, you know, if it wasn't clear from the, the great demo that Anand just did, that was actually running a deployed endpoint in our service, you know, available wide, worldwide, worldwide on the internet. The GraphQL browser you saw, Graphical, is going to localhost, but that's just a proxy to the real service. So when you, you know, that's a, a debug, debugging aid that we provide. Yes, my apologies out there. So, so when it, when it so this this thing is actually running as a service on anand.sibs. If you look at bottom right, anand.sibsin.net. API independent badger, we just picked up that underscore underscore GraphQL and we provide a proxy. And, and over time, we're going to have debug and other things in, in this particular proxy that you can actually figure out. And, and, and if you need to get into some details, you can. But, but the most important thing for us is that, that as you build code, as you import code, it automatically gets transferred to this endpoint and is always on and we monitor the backends and we do all the performance optimizations and other things. Thanks uh, uh, for that, Dan. OK, so, so with that, uh, if you guys like what we, uh, what we have, sign up uh, on stepsin.com. A blog post on this is coming soon. So in the next, next uh, few days, you'll, you'll see a blog post. We'll also give you a MySQL, uh, MySQL uh, credentials that you can use and test this against it. Those credentials will not have write permission. They only have read permissions, but you can actually go and run the queries, et cetera. And of course, we'll, we'll love your feedback. We have got a Discord uh, channel where, where developers who are on the journey with us actually go and ask, and, and, and we love interacting with all of you. OK, so with that. And, and for uh, those, just a second, and for those on the live chat, you can put your comments or questions in the uh, chat and comments panel in Twitch or YouTube. So. Okay, awesome. Uh, Helen, if you don't mind, if you can just stop my screen share, then I can go to that window. Awesome. Okay, uh, questions? Okay, can we get a link to the Discord, Helen? Uh, Jack Fusion is saying, uh, can we get a link to the Discord? I'll put it in chat. You put it in chat? I will. You will, okay. Okay, awesome. She'll put that in right now. Okay, awesome. Any other comments, questions? Okay, uh, going once, going twice. Uh, we have a shy crowd, uh, but uh, thank you very much for joining us. And and we think that that uh, we would love for you to give it a spin. 
give us feedback and and actually do do some real uh, projects where where you have kind of outsourced a lot of the pain to us and you then go focus on building your awesome react app or next app or whatever else you're doing and and let us manage all the backend connections keys and 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 data corralling uh, Dan, anything to add? No, I mean, it, you showed how easy it is to do the stitching, and so we're very excited to see people try out with bringing very disparate APIs and bringing them into a single GraphQL API that serves their application. OK, uh, awesome. Uh, thank you very much. And and with that, uh, we're going to sign off. Is that OK, Helen? Right, we're going to sign off. And hopefully, as I pointed out, we have got kind of subsequent uh, chapters in this series. We're going to talk about Postgres. We're going to talk about Mongo. We're going to talk about the, the stuff that you saw out of introspection, how you can modify and add new queries and add new types and, and, and all of that stuff you'll be able to do. You, are, you can do it right now, but I'll just basically walk you guys through uh, how to actually do that. So with that, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, if somebody has joined us from India, uh, late, late, uh, good evening, and and have a great rest of the week. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining.